Okay, so let me get you up to date with what I've been doing. So if you watch my last video, uh, my first penny plane, you'll see I made a penny plane. Now a penny plane has to weigh at least 3.1 grams, which is, you know, very heavy by indoor standards. So the strategy is to try to get as big a wing as possible. And in my first one, I made a wing with an eight inch cord, which is really big. And uh, I actually flew that for about five months. Okay, now as I point out in the video with that, the problem with that is to getting a positive margin of stability, uh, and that, that's a real problem. I had to do things like put weight on the nose and move the wing back as far as possible and so on and so forth. And the problem was that it was still, you know, it could really never got a big margin of stability, positive margin. And it, you have to do a lot of steering in the armory, for example, and it's a little drafty in there when the blowers are on. So, you know, it was very difficult to steer because anytime you upset it, it would go into a little dive and it may or may not recover, okay? The design is inherently unstable, all right? The problem is with the big wing area, it moves the aerodynamic center forward so it's in front of the center of gravity and that gives you a negative margin, that's bad. So that's why you got to move the wing back, okay? You can also make the stab bigger, that'll move it back the aerodynamic center back a little bit too, but there's a limit to that. Even if you make it really, really big, it only helps so much. All right, so I was I actually did a 1050 with the eight inch cord. I mean, it wasn't awful, <clears throat> but you know, it was just too unstable. So I went to a six inch cord and that's fine. I've been flying that for a while. I've working on the BP a little bit and I've gotten up around 12 minutes. I think I could probably get a little longer. Um, but the season's almost over now because once it gets hot and humid, you can't fly in the armory, really. And I was in the fall, so here's the next step. So, you know, again, now that I've got the six inch flying, I'd like to get that extra area back, but I don't want to go back to the eight inch wing because it's just the stability problems. So the other way to do it is with a biplane, okay? And I should point out that a lot of the open penny plane records are with biplanes, all right? And so what I thought is I was gonna, I designed one with about a five inch cord, but then I thought, you know what? I have two six inch wings. Why don't you at least just try it? It's gonna be kind of heavy, but just try it to see what happens. And that's basically what you see here. So these are my two six inch wings. And then I made a long pole here. Now the top one, I, I didn't bother to glue it in. It slides in with the tissue tubes, just like before. The bottom one I slid up with the tissue tubes and then I glued it in place. And then it goes into a tissue tube here. Now this one's in the fuselage, so you plug it in in the front. And the back one, I, you can may or may not be able to see, I raised it up a little bit because um, basically it, it, there's bracing in the way and I wanted to get it out of the way of the bracing, maybe if I tilt a little bit. Okay, so this tissue tube is raised up a little bit. Now, what I mean by the bracing is I had to change that. I originally had one bracing, okay? But I had to cut that because the bottom wing's in the way and let me move this over. And so what I did is I did double bracing. You see, there's a little V pole here, a little V of two sticks coming out. And then there's actually double bracing going from here to here on both sides. You probably can't see it because I really wanted to keep that fuselage stiff. I don't want it bending under high power and that's what was happening all right um i think that's it i think that's all i really did oh now here's the other thing it was a little tricky to figure out how do i calculate the margin of stability here because there's really two things that change now um one is you know obviously the total wingspan in this case it's actually doubled right because i got two wings so i doubled the wingspan and the other thing is it changes the aspect ratio, okay? So the aspect ratio is the span squared divided by the area. Now, if you have a square wing, that's the same thing as just the span divided by the cord, right? If you have 18 by three, it's six. But if you have a different shaped wing around the tips, again, it's the span squared divided by the area. Now, I was wondering, how do you calculate that for a biplane? And uh, somebody on Hip Hop gave me some references. I found uh, some stuff on biplanes. And there they define the aspect ratio as the longer span squared divided by the total area of the two wings. In other words, the longer wing squared divided by the total area. Uh, total area. Now, since the wings are the same length here, it's just the wing squared over the total area. But since the area is doubled, now the aspect ratio is a half. That's basically what happens. 
Now I put that into the spreadsheet to see what happens and it turns out it's just like having a wide wing, which makes a lot of sense. In other words, it, having the biplane moves the aerodynamic center forward again, and so you gotta put it back further in order to try to get a positive margin of stability, okay? So here's where I have it on this one. It's pretty much pretty far back, almost all the way you can do it, and I should have a positive margin of stability here. So I think we'll be okay, I'm not sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and give this a try, we'll see how it does, and uh, then I'll get back to you. All right, I forgot to mention one other issue that comes up, and that has to do with the spacing of the wings, all right? Now, one thing was, you know, how low to put the bottom wing, and I actually put it fairly close, and that's not unusual if you look at any penny biplanes. Uh, also, on the reference I had on biplanes, uh, it basically, in essence, said they should be at least one cord apart, all right? The basic issue is that the airflow, going, you know, it's going faster over here, and that's going to affect down here. It'll speed that up. You'll lose lift on the top wing and so on. But here I couldn't do that because it's a six-inch wing, all right? And I didn't want to make them six apart. Right now, they're about four and a half apart. So it's less than a wing cord. I have to also say, you know, uh, uh, when you read the book, a lot of these things are done on models or full size planes, which are going at much, much higher speeds. So I'm not sure how you know, much that, that applies to indoor like this, which is flying very slow, but we're gonna find out. So I set them apart about four and a half inches and they're up about an inch and a half from the bottom. And uh, we're gonna give it a go and see how it flies. Okay, so here's the penny biplane in the box, all right? The stab and the rudder are here. They're on a slider, just like I did before. There's the props, also on a slider. And this is on a slider, and this time it's facing the usual way, all right? I also have in my Fulcrates SK-2, which is a no-cal, and also my Cessna Centaurian, which is another no-cal. You'll see those in another video. Now you might have noticed here that this deck sticks up. The box is six inches deep, but of course you come up a little from the bottom and it actually sticks up. So you'll see what I did here is in the four corners, I glued a square piece of balsa. You can see over there and over here as well, okay? And what, what that does is it holds the lid up about a half inch so that it clears everything, all right? So uh, we're pretty much ready to go. I'm really anxious to see how this does, and it'll also be fun to fly the no-cals too. And we're gonna get out and go flying. All right, not bad. Biplane has potential. I, I wound to a very low torque. So now I'll wind it up a little bit more. Okay, so let me show you what I've been up to with the biplane. So I did get the one you just saw out and I flew it a little bit, but there were a couple things and you know, it went around, but there were a few things I didn't like, all right? One thing, it was very sensitive to the incidents and things like that again, and that was the problem I had with the eight inch one. And again, you gotta remember on this, I had to put the wing back as far as possible. Um, so, you know, that uh, in the end, let to cut to the chase, I just decided to go back to two five inch wings instead of two six inch. I only experimented with the six inch because I already had them. So here you go, here's my new one. And this one has two five inch wings. They're five by 18, basically. Now, the other thing I changed is that I thought with the other one, it had a six inch cord and the wing separation was about, it ended up being about three and three quarter inches, something like that. I actually thought there might be a little interference between the wings because I had funny things with the incidents. I expected them both to have a little positive, but I actually had to have almost like a little negative on the top. It was a little weird. And I think again, it was because of the margin of stability problem. It's just inherently unstable, so you're fighting all sorts of things. Um, I know in a reference on biplanes, they mentioned, they recommended at least one cord width apart. Now with the uh, five inch wing, I could do that. So that's what we have here. So here you can see they're pretty far apart. It's, it's just about five inches, maybe a little under. 
and it's up about three inches, okay? Now, the other thing I changed is that here I used a carbon fiber rod, and what was interesting is, so I have .029, I thought that was a little too flexible. I have .039, and that's what I used. I thought that was perfect, and what was interesting is the carbon fiber rod ended up, here's the original, this is the balsa one I was gonna use, and it turns out the carbon fiber rod was actually a little lighter, or close to the same weight. It was actually a little less, about 20 milligrams less. So I ended up using that. And the other thing I changed is, this time I made the tissue tubes long, you know, they're my plasticized tissue tubes, about a half inch, so they can stick up above the bracing. There's a little V, it's in where the sponge is holding the plane, and there's double bracing on this plane, tungsten bracing. So I had to get out of the way of that, and this time I did it just by making the tissue tubes longer. They're like three quarter inch, so they stick up about a half inch. And then I just put little plugs on the carbon fiber here. I'll just kind of come in. You can probably see it a little bit. There's a balsa plug on the carbon fiber and then it plugs into the tissue tube. I'm really happy with this. Gives you plenty of room for adjustment. In the middle wing, I just put a little balsa on there. You know, that this goes through it. I drilled a little hole in the balsa and then I glued it to the wing. The top wing is removable actually. It has tissue tubes and you can take it off or adjust it. I, I just leave it on for the most part. All right, so this design I, it should be a little bit more stable and you can see the wing isn't as far back. So when I calculated the constant margin of stability, I was able to uh, move the wing up to keep it at around 5%. All right, I tested it in the bedroom. It's always hard not to test these things. And I, and I thought it looked pretty good. You know, I, I think it looks nice. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, now I can have both wings slightly positive and it flies fine. And that's exactly, that makes sense to me. So I think with this wing separation, we're gonna have a little better performance. I'll try to get some video when I go fly it this week. All right, this time we got up there. I still think I need a little heavier motor, but climbs good. It's three minutes. I think we're still going up. I hope we don't go much more, but we'll see. We're starting to get close to the light. But I'm pretty happy. It's flying. i to work on it, but looks good. Let's see. Ooh, getting close to the line there. E <laughs> Let's see, we're just clearing that light. But we're probably going to hit the line on the next turn. Let's see what happens. Good, we're Still a foot below the light. Gee, I wish it would drift out a little bit. It's too close to the wall. No, we're not climbing. I think we're good. This is good. And I think, what are we doing with the line? We're actually, I can't tell if we're under it or over it. It's over the line there. The line goes at an angle. No, it's over the line. Okay, we'll see if we can avoid hitting that. Would be nice. Eee, it's getting close. below it yes we're below it there but here it's hard to tell oh 
Oh, it's below it there, so we're good to go. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll get back around uh, at least a 10 minute. That's where we should be, but we'll see how it goes.